Apparently, J-Lo wanted to file for divorce on their second wedding anniversary to make it sting, to hurt Ben Affleck. It's yeah. like the only person that you hurt with that is, is yourself. You, because now everybody's looking at you crazy. You're 50, 55 years old. You're, You're going divorced. to be alone. This is the fourth yeah. time she has gotten married and is getting divorced. And yet she still feels like it's Ben's fault. Maybe they didn't get along. Maybe they didn't see eye to eye. But they didn't see eye to eye when they were dating. They didn't see eye to eye when they were married. They didn't see eye to eye when they were coming back together. But you don't have to eat the whole birthday cake to know that the birthday cake was made with rotten eggs. All you need is a spoonful. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, the second go around and it didn't work. They are officially getting divorced. And the signs were all there and everyone, you know, it's interesting. We all saw it. We all said, hey, this is not working out. But now yeah. it's official, and now he's getting the same treatment. This is what happens anytime you end a relationship that doesn't end nicely, or, or or just you know even the ones that you know that do. She's now changing the entire narrative and doing dirty stuff. And apparently J Lo wanted to file for divorce on their second wedding anniversary uh, to make it sting to hurt Ben Affleck. That's the uh, that's nice. the thing alleged in this nice. In nice. this New York Post article, um, it says here, uh, Jennifer Lopez was intentional about when she filed for divorce from Ben Affleck on the second anniversary of their second wedding ceremony, which took place in Georgia, uh, according to Daily Mail. Jennifer said she, had tri- she was tired of being humiliated by Ben, and she waited until the two-year anniversary because she wanted it to sting an inside alleged... Uh, to the publication Wednesday. Now, what, how, did, did they say how she was being humiliated? That doesn't come up here in this article because there's, I don't, there's not one specific thing because it's not infidelity that's happening. There's no accusations of infidelity. Uh, the thing that's, that her camp has said, basically, because when you release these things, there are people releasing them. So this is probably yeah. released from either Ben's side. You know, it goes back and forth, right? And they go, insiders are saying... Her thing was, it says Ben was not, you know, she was trying to keep the marriage going and Ben was checked out, which seems like her story. Mm. And it seems like. Uh, well, it, I don't understand why. Here, well, that's a mm. contradiction in terms. If you want to put a divorce in specifically to make it sting because somebody was checked out, if they're checked out, why not just, OK, this is not what you want to do. Let's not do it. Why do you have to go out of your way? To be an ass, you know, to, 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 to you want it. I mean, and, and like, it, this is the, the level of unawareness, uh, l- lack of self-awareness, I should say, where somebody is saying, I did this specifically to hurt him. Um, but I wanted to work so hard to keep the relationship going. There, nobody switches like that. There, people, there's a level of consistency And this is what I say to guys all the time. You know, you got to be honest with yourself and uh, you got to be honest, period. But you especially got to be honest with yourself. And if you broke up with somebody and there's specific reasons why you broke up with them, um, there, there, no, I mean, first of all, 80 percent of all marriages are filed by women. So men will stay. 80 percent of all divorces. All divorces. Right. They. So men will stay. They'll be miserable and stay. Um, the difference is that women go, enough of this, and I'm out of here. And then, but the but the point is, it, it's either you're in it trying to make it work, and then you go, I, I just don't understand where the anger comes from. Where, how did somebody humiliate you? I totally agree. It's, it's very possible that they both, maybe they didn't get along. Maybe they didn't see eye to eye, but they didn't see eye to eye when they were dating. They didn't see eye to eye when they were married. They didn't see eye to eye when they were getting back together. They didn't see, and they surely didn't see eye to eye when, when they, when they remarried. And so this is, this is somebody who you're, you're, you already know who this person is and you're ignoring this because you're being dishonest with yourself about what you got. Yeah, and it's uh and all the signs are there. I think the big lesson you take from this, first of all, there's a couple things. One, uh people like this never take accountability 
ever. Yeah. This is her fourth divorce. Well, they don't have to. It's also they don't have to. Yeah. This is her fourth divorce. This is the fourth yeah. time she has gotten married and is getting divorced, and yet she still feels like it's Ben's fault. Yeah. Right? It's Ben's fault. There's no accountability on her. Like, what have I done that four times in a row, well, four times in general, I have married somebody and they have not wanted to stay with me. Yeah. No responsibility. It's on Ben. It's on Ben. There's no lesson learned. Because when you're that vain, you don't learn the lesson. And also and you, women- And you have a bunch of people around you who are trying to secure the bag. And as long as they're securing the bag, they're not going to tell you that something's wrong with you. Nobody's going to tell you that, that you're the problem or this is an issue that you've created. Or maybe you should try, try you know, you maybe just take a little bit of accountability. You know, nobody gets married to get divorced. So if he, you have to assume for him, it's, there's no, no situation where um, he didn't get into this because he didn't, because he 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 didn't want it to work, especially especially not the second time around. Of course, but, he wanted it to work. No one goes into a relationship wanting it to fail. Yeah, you don't want it to fail. Uh, yeah. One of the things they said their 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 breakdown was probably partly due to their polar opposite lifestyles. Jennifer has a big entourage that follows her around daily: glam squad, videographers, trainers, assistants. Ben understands that being her is a twenty four seven job. Uh, ben can leave his work uh, at the door if he chooses to, and they're not always on the same page. They both have so much going on between them. I mean, so look, this is something you have to keep in mind, you know, before you yeah. get married, if you have different lives. But this is also the other thing, and this was a very rushed marriage. I don't think anyone, anyone should get married uh, without at least four years into a relationship at any point. Yeah. At any point. It's just, it's absurd. You don't really know the person until you go, because you, you're in that honeymoon phase. You're happy, you're in love, everything is going great. And when everybody gets comfortable, that's where you see the true person. Yeah, that's when it all comes out. Yeah. That's when it comes out. In other you words, know. another word for this, for J-Lo is diva. <laughs> yeah. She's a diva. So it's, it, there's a, a clear situation where this is, this is, this is the same thing perpetuated over and over again. I get that she has to look good. Plus, she's older, so it takes a little more time to, you know, shine up the brass. Upkeep. That's a lot of upkeep. Uh, yeah. Now, here's the other question. Is it weird that this, this divorce also coincides with her album flopping, uh, her having to cancel a tour? Her world tour had to be moved to smaller venues. It had to be canceled. And then also her documentary didn't do particularly well. Does uh, that does that affect the home life? I now definitely she's... think so. This is a lack of accountability. Your time has passed. You're worth millions. I mean, you know, you, it's hard when you're looking for that charge. Here's the other thing I heard through the grapevine, friend of the show, uh, Ben Affleck is hanging out with Pete Davidson. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the so, guy who uh, you want. That's the guy who'll help you get back into things. Back into he the will swing help of you things. get back into swinging things. You know what I mean? Pete Davidson, who you uh, who you mentored, who is who yeah. is the ladies' man he is today because of Dante Nero. Yeah, and you could go back into the archives if you want to check that out. You could if you want to see all the archives or listen to all the archives. You can uh, you can subscribe to our Patreon by the way, Man School Two Hundred Two, patreoncom slash Man School Two Hundred Two. We put up all the old archives and bonus content. It's always good stuff. Um, yeah, I think he was what nineteen then, uh, maybe even less. He might have been yeah. like, yeah, he was. I mean, he started when he was like fourteen or something. So I don't know. You yeah. might have gotten him sixteen, seventeen. He was really a young kid. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. didn't know what he was doing? He was and, a virgin when I met him. That was yeah. crazy. And uh, in a way, because of you, Con Kanye West uh, hates Jews now. So that's you know that. That's you know the domino effect. I mean, you know what I mean? If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it way big. You know, I, I think that there's a whole, there's another thing that, that I think happens is when you you go through a breakup and then you're sitting by and you're thinking, oh, I remember this. The problem is you never remember the bad stuff. The good stuff raises to the top. All the cream raises to the top. And then you're like, yeah, I remember just when we had such a good connection. We had such good chemistry. <laughs> just, and it, it's just like there's a situation where you you're doing this, you're acting in this, but you're but you're not really assessing 
the person that you were with in the first place who is who for 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 legitimate reasons you broke up with in the first place. And I also think there's never a situation where people um you know you hang out with somebody again and the, the you know the sparks are flying but the, you know it's when the smoke clears that you see Oh, yeah, you go, oh, yeah, I remember why I broke up with this person. And I'm not saying it's her fault or his fault. We don't know that, but it's probably her fault. It's probably her but, fault. Uh, she seemed like a pretty atrocious person. Yeah, but the... um, Not just in relationships, but in life. Did you... In general, you, but yeah. but I think the other... You know, there was a, there was a whole article about uh, Tommy Davidson saying that she, you know, he kind of snubbed her because he knew her from Living Color and that she was just you know, whole, like, they were real cool, and then, you know, when he ran up on her after the fact, after she had blown up, she was real shady. I mean, mm. the bottom line is, you're the tick-tock, tick-tock, the clock is ticking. I mean, what is she now, 50-something? 50, 50, let me see. Um, She's in her 50s, I know that. Um, uh, she's 55, this is Jennifer Lopez. Okay, so, like, this is a situation when if you haven't changed in 55 uh, years and fit by 55 it's probably not gonna happen and remember we did it we did a video where where ben ben is slamming the door <laughs> remember yeah he, he, angry i mean there's tons of videos there's him angry yeah. at the award ceremony there's yeah. her uh he's having a good time and he, he's like kind of goofing around at the grammys and she's like slapping his chest smacking his chest like hey we're on camera like really you know mm -hmm. just there's just a lot going on there just a lot of signs that you just can't ignore here's how awful she is as a person by the way did you know the story that she uh why she fired a group of backup dancers because they no. had the wrong horoscope that she didn't like oh really yeah this was uh jennifer lopez is across the ocean blah 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 here we go sorry um lopez once dismissed prospective backup dancers who were virgos and this isn't just some random person who's claiming this. It's Heather Morris of Glee, who is also a dancer. And she was just saying it to Justin uh, Martindale on his podcast, just saying, Morris claimed that after a day of holding auditions for one of J-Lo's tours, the star said to a group of dancers, thank you so much. You guys have worked so hard. By a show of hands, if there are any Virgos in the room, can you just raise your hand? And then, according to Morris, Lopez whispered to her assistant, and the dancers were sent home. Um, that is atrocious. That well, is. That's because you've never dealt with Virgos, uh, Harry. Uh, I don't yeah. know which one the Virgos are. I don't care. I don't know either. It's don't a like nonsense. Either. Horoscopes are nonsense. Stop it. Just stop, stop. it. Just stop. Don't. Stop. don't. Yep. Um, just and to I don't, take somebody's livelihood away, somebody yeah. you know, to because it's just she's, a, a, <sighs> she's an atrocious person. She has a history of, of behaving that way. Tommy Davidson just uh, just uh, not respecting Tommy Davidson, a coworker her because she, she yeah. a coworker hers because she's too big. I guarantee you, she is a difficult person to deal with. But then that's also well, Ben Affleck. That. That's another thing, though. Whenever you know, it's it's a weird thing when you hear about good people you hear nothing but good things about them you know you always hear good things about it and people who are trash you hear nothing but bad things about them um so it's a it's a it, it people don't change but uh, the the question is why a 50 year old 50 plus year old ben affleck would walk back into that that horror house right again after he got a full dose in the first place. I'll tell so you what like, it is. I'll tell you mm. what it is. It's he was in a very uh a vulnerable place. I think he had just, you know, went back to rehab. He was getting clean and sober. He had just gotten divorced from his uh his wife Jennifer Garner, you know, and I think he was in a fragile, a not great mental place, which is why you don't do these things uh in in rash manners. You don't rush. You never these let things. emotion have a seat at the table because that this is the outcome. You're making the decision based in on on the fact that you're emotional and you want things to be something that they're not. And you're not really looking at an honest perspective of what you're dealing with. If you love what we're doing here, 
Go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. And nobody, people don't change at 55. I mean, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it doesn't happen. We've never seen it. Um, um, what are, What are some of the things that are... What is the damage of letting emotion have a seat at the table in a relationship? You, well, I, you know, I say this all the time. It's just that um, the minute you allow emotion to have a seat at the table, right? Whatever your mental proficiency is. However, let's say you have a... A, a, a very uh, you're logical and you're observant and you're honest and all these things and you allow emotion to have a seat at the table in in my estimation you can count your proficiency at making decisions down to a third so cut two-thirds of whatever whatever reasonability that you have any ability to understand logic any ability to be aware of what your surroundings are and um Cut that down two thirds. So now you're operating on the plane of you of a, a, a deficiency of reason and 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 understanding because you're emotional. And so when the red flags hit, you don't really know what you're doing. You're in a situation where you 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 just you know you have you a focus, you have flags, an agenda, yeah. and you're trying to achieve that agenda. And also, this is uh, the other thing. There's a couple things to learn from this. One is. No matter who you're dating, you can't allow them to behave atrociously. And no. I guarantee you, Jennifer Lopez called a lot of the shots and been put up with it. And you yeah. you can't. You can't. When you have to, when you spend six months, we saw at least six months. No, maybe more. It's been two years of different mm -hmm. footage of him slamming car doors, yeah. him being upset at the award show. It shouldn't last two years. Yeah. That shouldn't yeah. last two years. It shouldn't last six months. If you have Especially to keep doing not that, at fifty years old. No. Soon as you soon as you get a taste, I we you know I've said I haven't said this a long time on the podcast, but you don't have to eat the whole birthday cake to know to, to know that the birthday cake was made with rotten eggs. All you need is a spoonful. And this is somebody who has already experienced. He had already been with her. He knew what her flaws were. He knew who she was. And what's really, I think the the real essence of this that I think what needs to be said is that you you don't have to be with somebody if you're not compatible and it's not working out. You you got to be honest enough to say, yeah, I'm 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 really not happy in this with. I mean, I really care about you and I I wanted this to work, but I'm really not happy with the way that I'm being treated or so on and so forth. And it's time. It's probably time for us to check out, not to wait until it gets so abusive that, you you know, this woman says, I'm going to I'm going to file divorce papers uh, on on our anniversary. So it stings. It's yeah. like the only person that you hurt with that is, is yourself, you, because now everybody's looking at you crazy. You're 50, 55 years old. Right. You're, You're going divorce. to be alone. So you, you, somebody will. I mean, she's bad she's enough. Not to be somebody, will, somebody will come in there because nobody uh, understands. Here's the biggest problem, Dante, is that in relationships, guys have been trained to accept yeah. that unhappiness and disappointment is part of the relationship. This yeah. is what it is. I don't get what I want. I'm not happy. I never it's get what I want anyway. So, it, so, and the bottom line is, you can have a conversation. Um, you can have a conversation with somebody. Listen, I'm just not happy with the way things are. And that's not, uh, you know, that's not a reflection on you. It's a, I mean, because she's allowed to be who she wants. Clearly, she does. She is who she wants to be. That's why this is her fourth marriage. So, yeah. with no consideration of everybody else. But I mean, we're also talking about a situation where, um, you know, you, 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 you. It's it's okay that things fail. The problem is that you got to acknowledge that they're failing and address them immediately. And so why that you don't failing? waste two what years. What did you do? Yeah. What did you, know? you do? What could you have done to make it better? Yeah. You know? I, I was I was talking to a, uh, I was consulting with a guy and he's married 14 years and he he starts off by saying you know I know that this is my fault because I was a pe people pleaser and all I wanted to do was please people all the time and I put my wife in a position 
you know, there's always this, well, she's she's from South America. She has her hot black, hot and blood, hot, hot Latino black and, blood. She's spicy. And it's like, shut up. Listen, people can't disrespect you if you don't. So I don't care where, I don't care if she's from where the chili peppers come from. It don't matter. The point is that you have to set boundaries. It's something that uh, we talk people about treat all the time. People treat you how you allow them to how treat you. How te- you teach them how to treat you. Yeah. And and you have to, you, this should be your measure. Your measure should always be RFF. RFF is reasonable, fair, and firm. Means am I, am I, is what I'm asking for reasonable? Am I being fair to the person that I'm asking for it? And am I being firm about what my boundaries? We say this all the time that, uh, you know, relationships are easy. You got to know what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiate them. And if you do that, you're you're doomed to, to be in a situation that's going to fail. Or at least unless you have made your choice that you're going to re- resolve yourself to the fact that Somebody is going to not continue your, they're not going to treat you the way you want. And this is what you're settling with. Um, I think also what happens is I think that, uh, you know, uh, closure is for suckers. What I mean by that is somebody will act in a relationship in a way that is clearly clear and concise about what your intentions are. But because somebody doesn't verbally say it, right, they still have hope that it's going to change, that it's going to turn around. So they put up with it. But if somebody had said to, if, if J-Lo had said to Ben in the, initially when he started courting her, he'd go, you know, really, I miss you too, and we have history, but I want you to understand something. I don't care about you. <laughs> uh, you are here to make me happy, to please me, and to be an emotional punching bag when I'm ready. I want to dictate to you what you're going to do, how you're going to respond, and because I have a public image, and my public image is how I make my money, which incidentally, nobody cares. Because if they did care, she wouldn't have had to, she wouldn't have had to um, cancel the shows. You know, mm-hmm. her her album would have. So all this stuff that you think is important, more important than the relationship, which ultimately the, the, the clarity and the peace that you have in a relationship is the thing that makes your creativity better. If you're fighting at home, you can't. Well, I only I, I have to give that the caveat, except for Mary J. Blige. When Mary J. Blige was going through to abuse, she did her best music. But I mean, let's be honest, nobody really is, you know, looking at J Lo as somebody who thrashes the songs out, you know. So no. but no. I mean, not to say that she's not a great performer, but we're we're literally talking about a situation where you you all these things that you thought mattered, when it comes down to it, you didn't even sell the albums that you want. Nobody cares. People are and, not interested. And the last thing I think we need to discuss is uh when a woman decides she's done with you, when she starts to break up, when done. she divorces, break up, when, or even before she finishes breaking up, yeah. she will change the narrative of who you are, what the relationship was, and what the reality of the relationship yeah. was to fit the motive so that she can be okay with leaving the relationship. Yeah, this happens absolutely. in any relationship that breaks up. It just does. When she's out, that's why all of a sudden it's Ben didn't try, he didn't care. Of course he cared. Sure. Of course he cared. Probably still cares. Probably still cares. It's not easy. I mean, maybe not now since he's hanging out with yeah. Pete. Oh, but uh, <laughs> but they will change the narrative. Pete. Yeah. yeah. And change how they look at you. Like, now he's a piece of shit. Now he's scum. And now you're going to do everything to hurt. This is the same man two years ago. You married him twice because he had two wedding ceremonies. Mm-hmm. That's how much you loved him. You loved him so nice you had to marry him twice. And now you're filing divorce papers on the second anniversary to stick it to him. You know, and even in Ben's defense, I think that he probably thought that we're both 50. You know, I'm I'm calm. I'm not childish. I'm not immature the way I was before. And, you know, the bottom line is, I mean, I've always thought she always had a special place in my heart. So I think let's go down this road one more time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but just because 
you have changed and you are in a situation where you're winding down doesn't mean somebody else is winding down. I mean, let's be honest. I, I mean, any, and I've said this about every and anybody, any, anybody that's got an entourage, their, the, their craft level, their, the, the efficiency of what they do on stage. If their performance starts to go to shit, because you have people around you. Yes. And you to death and not being honest about who you are, what, you are and what you do it's and insane so, and, and the fact that she's got a there's a documentary i mean she's 50 years old i mean she's done whatever she's done but i mean you know it, I, I mean i don't even think share has a uh a shares a doc, a documentary 97 like that, yeah. with a 20 year old you know um you know it's just the the ego of this the ego that tells you don't you know who i am don't don't you can't see what my and I'm worth more than you. I'm I'm more valuable and and you need to. But but it, let's be honest. Anybody who's in a relationship with somebody goes, yeah, uh, you go. Like, you know, what really makes me happy is that we can be close and cuddle and this and that. And But if you if they really the way they're acting is I don't care about you, your career, your happiness. You are just a pawn in my chessboard. To to satisfy whatever need that is, and when I when I want to put you up or I want to ignore you, I can. And if somebody said that, you would immediately. I've, I've done this a thousand times on on consultations. Like, what if your what if your woman said, I, "I don't care what you think, and what makes you happy does I, I don't care what makes you happy. I'm gonna do exactly what I want to do." If your woman and said that to you, it'd be time you'd to leave. leave. You'd leave, and they don't say it but they show it with their actions They're in saying, any relationship yeah. on both sides, any yeah. part of the relationship. When people show you with their actions that they don't care, believe them. Because they don't, don't believe what they're saying. If there, if there's an incongruency, if there's an incongruency in what they're saying and what they're doing, then why would you ever, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, why yeah. would you ever do that? Yeah. And hey, listen, poor Ben Affleck, if he had just reached out for a consultation from he either just, you or myself, we could have helped this guy. Dantaneiro.com, he could have clicked on consult, he could have booked something. I would have I would have saw Ben Affleck. I would have I would have made time. That's oh, he right. could have hit you up. Yeah, he could have advice from Harry at, at, at gmail.com. Gmail I would have set up a time to do a life advice, relationship advice, whatever he needed. We could have helped him. Don't be like Ben Affleck. Reach out so that <laughs> your life doesn't end up being ruined. By a 55 year old Puerto Rican. To ask for help. It's a shame. It's such it's a shame. shame. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.